<coughs> Sword Art Online. <laughs> Alright, I'm sure none of us wanted to see a new SAO video, but hey, there's a new movie out, and as I live in Asia now, I was able to see it before it was released in English-speaking countries. So for once, we get to cover something that no English-speaking YouTube channel has been able to cover yet. Yes, yeah, Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale is the newest addition to the SAO franchise, and it's set to be released in selected screenings next month in Europe, America, and Australia. So if you have any ability to watch it, or just want to know if this movie is any different from what this franchise has offered so far, then here's everything you need to know in a nutshell with no spoilers. The film is set after the events of Season 2, and starts off by introducing us to yet another new device, the Augma, which is an augmented reality device that is basically the Oculus Rift powered by the graphics engine known as Life. Oh god, these graphics are terrible. Out of this technology has come a new game, Ordinal Scale, being the hot new MMO developed exclusively for the Augma, starting the new genre ARMMORPGs. T-U-V-W-A-Y-Z That has monsters spawning in real life locations reminiscent of the scenes we saw when Pokemon Go first launched. Actually no, it's a bit more sensible than Pokemon Go as we don't see any stampede of people trampling over each other whenever some dickhead shouts out Dragonite. So of course with the hot new game and technology out, the SAO gang are already busy playing it because what reason would they have not to, right? Hey, considering what we went through the last two times this happened, don't you think we should be a bit more careful in case the technology goes wrong again? <laughs> <laughs> That'll never happen! It happens. Yes, yeah, something becomes awry when old SAO bosses start spawning about the city, and it's up to our crew to figure out how the new characters, Yuna, an AI idol program developed specifically for Ordinal Scale, Eiji, the second ranked player in the entire game, and Dr. Shigemura, the developer of the Augma, are all connected to the strange events surrounding Ordinal Scale. The movie follows the formula that got the franchise going in the first place. New device with new game, new villain using the technology for their own goal, Kirito becomes god, etc, etc. It doesn't really do anything new or groundbreaking, but instead takes the best bits people like the franchise for, and yes, there were really bits that people enjoyed, and builds on that, resulting in technically the best thing the franchise has done to date, but that's not really saying too much as the bar was never that high. The first thing the movie does right is give the sense that there is something at stake again. See, the problem with arcs like Alfine and Excalibur is that there is nothing really at stake for dying, even if the characters could really act like it, and any sense of urgency and thus our investment was lost, because you can play your death off as dramatically as you like, but when we know you're about to respawn in a few minutes, you'll just look like an overdramatic crybaby wasting your time dying when you could have got on the fucking payload. The stakes are back, but this time they are different, and without spoiling specifics, it's more about the relationship that Kirito and Asuna have built up together, and the relationship that every SAO player has built up with each other that is ultimately at stake here. It's not the same cliche, if you die in the game, you die in real life, or if you die in real life, you get a chance to die in the game, where you die in real life, or if you die in real life, you are also killed in real life. But the stakes felt more personal, which I actually found refreshing as it was more reminiscent of the Intimates character drama we saw in Mother's Rosario combined with the large scale events of SAO. Yes, there is actual drama to be found here surprisingly, and it does this by putting more focus on the romance between Kirito and Asuna, who individually get the most screen time. This is the true sequel to Aincrad, more so than Alfheim, GGO, Excalibur, or Mother's Rosario ever were, as it directly plays on the consequence and developments that happened during that arc. And it also extends to the antagonists, because for the first time in the entire series, we actually have some antagonists with genuine motivations behind their actions and not just the <laughs> I don't know. Seems legit. Reasoning that we are so used to. As we learn more about who these extra characters are and the true nature of the technology, it makes sense on a personal level why the events that are happening are happening. And unfortunately, I cannot expand on this further without going into spoilers. Not only that, but they also provide a genuine logical obstacle for Kirito to overcome. Yes, for once, Kirito doesn't start off as being completely overpowered. And it's not for some contrived reason or writing in villains that are even more OP. But they are a logical foil to who Kirito is as a person and the nature of how this game works. But while it may just sound like I'm singing praise for this movie, make no mistake. It may be a step up from what's come before, but it is still far from great. At the end of the day, this is still Sword Art Online, and the movie still shares the same faults that plagued the series and made a lot of it so hated in the first place. There are the same arse pulls, plot holes, and shallow characters that the series was known for. Arsena this time does get more screen time than usual, but aside from her, Liz and Silica are still as useless as ever, Klein is still unfortunately the side character punching bag, Yui is still the Deix Machina machine, Agil is black, Sinon is present but doesn't really do much, and Sugu gets mostly shafted with her big climactic moment being a glorious shot of her bouncing breasts splayed out on the huge theatre screen. Whether that's
that's a praise or criticism I'll leave up to you. Which I find a shame because I walked out of the theatre feeling like the movie dropped a lot of potential, which I know is something we've all heard before from SAO, but unlike in the series, it's not what it did that ruined it, it's what it didn't do. All the elements were there for this to be great, like a franchise turning piece of work. We had sincere character drama, antagonists with real motivations, and a genuine obstacle for Kirito to overcome. And the movie did nothing with it. Kirito being Kirito overcame his obstacles in about 0.3 of a second by merely brooding harder. The drama was resolved with none of the characters really getting any developments or changing at all by the end. And the antagonists lacked any kind of depth that could have been given to them with the motivations they had in favour of being cliche bad guys at the end because Kirito has to beat someone up. It's still as shallow and predictable as Sword Art Online ever was and any interesting themes were never built on or explored at all and overall comes off as just rather bland all said and done. Also the transparency of the series is still as apparent as ever as while the fan service is certainly not as tasteless as it was in the series it is still definitely there and on top of this I can just imagine the boardroom meeting discussing how to make the movie even more wildly appealing than it already is. All right people I know Sword Art Online is the most popular anime out right now, but how do we make it even more popular? Well, well I know, man. It's not a bad thing. Maybe it's it is. Is. I've got it! How about Sword Art Online? With idols. Genius! Oh my God. Yes, yes, really yes, idols. Having said that, if there was one reason I was glad to see this on the big screen, it's that the movie definitely delivered on the animation and action sequences. Yuki Kajura again delivers a soundtrack that has consistently been one of SAO's high points, and the action sequences managed to build on the best ones the series has to offer. Seeing this on the big screen was an absolute treat, and the final climactic clash was the finest sequence to come out of SAO by a long shot, being the largest scale battle that looked amazing while paying tribute to the entire franchise thus far. And along with the major bombastic action scenes, it also features very well done idol scenes too in its climax. You know, if that's your thing. With this in mind, Ordinal Scale feels like your typical average Hollywood action blockbuster, and that is it in a nutshell. It's as close as we've gotten to an anime summer blockbuster, and for that reason you can even enjoy the best parts of it without having seen SAO at all. It takes the tried and true formula of the Ironcrad arc, but adds a little more focus on character motivations and relationships while delivering some of the best action sequences the series has to offer, giving us the sequel to that arc fans always wanted. It is, however, still plagued with the same problems and issues that make the series so hated by some in the first place, and is still very much SAO, shallow characters, predictable plots and all. How good is Sword Art Online Ordinal Scale? Well, if you're looking for a definitive answer of if this movie is worth watching, then ask yourself this. Have you ever found enjoyment out of Sword Art Online? If you hated the original series, then this will not change your mind. If you're a fan, then you'll probably think this is orgasmic, but if you found any kind of enjoyment from the original series, especially the first art, then you will find something to enjoy here, especially if you get the chance to see it in theatres. So yeah, for me, it was enjoyable. So hopefully now, if you actually watch this video, you don't need a rating to sum up all my points in a single character, but as I know there will be plenty of people who will just skip to the end looking for some kind of rating, then I guess it was like, I don't know, a C plus out of 100 with sugar on top and puppies. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much this month to Jared Cattell, Gabe Brown, Vincent Mooney, Pekasari, Lao Ken, and everyone else on Patreon for helping to support me for this month. Now, I know I said I wouldn't be doing anime reviews again, as I feel like in this day and age are a lot less relevant than they used to be. But as this was a theatre release and not everyone could just go out and stream the first few episodes to see if it's for them, I thought there would be a good number of you who actually wanted to know how good the anime film was. So as we get a lot of anime screenings here in Asia, I may end up doing more reviews of anime films screened here in the future. Also, since reviews Viewing anime films and theatre is new for me. If you're interested in hearing a spoilerific discussion of the film, then let me know as I may put up another quick video if enough people want to see it and, you know, don't mind being spoiled or whatever. But apart from that, that's it from me. I've been Giyuk and I'll see you all next time.